What's going on guys? It's Jay from Dirty Boy Tools here to bring you a video about my latest and newest tool pouch. This is the Tough Belt 7 in 1. And of course these are all my tools that I use. Uh, these are tools I can carry at work and they will cover 95 to 100% of the jobs that I encounter. It's a little heavy, it's a little bulky, so it's not ideal for everybody. And honestly, it's not even ideal for me some of the time because uh, when I was wearing it a lot, I'd definitely feel the weight of it. And uh, it would be a little annoying compared to my old pouches. But it's always uh, like some pros and cons to uh, wearing heavy pouches. If you wear a heavy pouch with a lot of tools, you can fix a lot of things, uh, but you're slower. And if you wear a light pouch with a little bit of tools, you're going to have a hard time fixing things. So it's all about what works for you. Uh, this happens to work for me for now, but I may end up going to something lighter um, and with a little bit less tools in the future as I evaluate different situations that I encounter. Uh, the Tough Built 7-in-1 tool pouch is a great pouch. It's very durable. It holds the tools well. Um, it can even, my little upside down test that I do. I can't really do it on this camera with the angle, but if you hold it upside down and the tools are in the right place, they are going to hold in place and not fall out. Uh, granted, if I take one tool out, then some of them might fall out if I turn it upside down again. The whole point is, is when I put all these tools in, I don't want anything to come out. I'm never upside down. I never, you know, work upside down in any way, but I want them to be secure because I've had a history of losing tools and I'm trying to change and rewrite that history and not lose any more tools uh, because that is frustrating. Now this pouch comes with this little clip system right here. Uh, you just put it onto your belt and then you just lock this in like so and it slides on and as it slides on it clips in through here so you hear that click and then you unclick that and take it off. It's supposed to make it very convenient and it does. Uh, you can slide this on, slide this off. It's very easy to do compared to some of my older pouches, which just have this. This seems simple too, but a lot of times you're trying to get it on your belt and you're pulling your belt out, especially if you wear your belt tight like I do, and it's just it's a little inconvenient. This does make it more convenient, but there's a downside. Uh, if you have to wear this pouch, you have to wear this on your belt pretty much at all times and it's going to ride up against your hip bone and uh, you're going to feel it there. You might forget about it throughout the day, you might not think about it, but it's always going to be there just kind of rubbing on your hip bone. Some people warned me about it when I first got the pouch and uh, they're absolutely right. Now for the most part that's something I can ignore, but you know, it depends on the day. If, it, if, if I have a busy day, I can ignore things. If things aren't busy, then those small things will creep up on me and, and bother me. So that's up to you guys if you want to get this pa uh, little clip system. It is good, it is convenient, but you're going to feel this up against your hip bone, especially if your belt is tight. A lot of these tools are going to be tools they've seen in previous pouches. Um, that means they work. That means they work very well and I like them. And I'm transferring them over. Uh, and some of them are going to be newer tools that I think... I had the need for but I couldn't fit into previous pouches but I guess I will start from the front side so front side is something many of you have probably seen before uh, this is my Timo bit kit uh, this is probably my favorite style of holding bits it's got a tape measure style clip on the back I did modify it a little bit I cut it down uh, just so it could fit into this particular pouch because the original one was a lot fatter and that doesn't fit into here uh, so I cut that down, but I can keep 32 bits in here in a folding system. And, uh, oh, there it is. I got scared for a second. I thought I lost that bit. And I can keep all my bits here. So this side I keep a lot of, uh, what is it, standard hex bits and some Phillips and uh, Torx 30, which I find that I need once in a while. And then this side is uh, some metrics, uh, metric hex bits. Uh, these are some flats. Uh, I think I have this bit somewhere, I'm not sure where. And then I have uh, some larger metric bits. And I think I have one star bit that I really don't need, so I might switch that out. But we'll see what happens. So right here I got a 
Vampire Tools, V Shears, uh, VT3909, and of course I'm going to link everything in the uh, description for you guys if you want to get these tools yourself. Great pair of scissors, works as a, a great pair of nippers as well if you have wire right here and you want to cut into it. Uh, so it is a good substitute for nippers. Um, in general, it's just good for cutting down cables and if you need to, hose. Uh, I'd rather not cut hose down with this, I'd rather use a special set of cutters like this. Uh, but, you know, it depends on the situations you're in. Yeah. This also comes with a pair of crimpers right here. So, you can do all kinds of crimps that you need to with this. So, right here I have something that's been in pretty much all of my kits. This is the uh, Vim Tools uh, pass-through ratchet. It's a bicycle style ratchet. Uh, it's got the little extender on it that you know you can change uh, the distance of that or if you want to keep it in there solid you turn it around and do that and now you can't push it in if you want to push it in you just align up the flat side with the dot once you line those up passes right through and you have a nice T driver it ratchets both ways one of the most useful pieces in my kit this combined with the bit driver of course comes in handy and is very very helpful so right below that I have a Baco 6 inch wrench. I've used many different varieties of 6 inch wrenches. Uh, I've used the uh, Fujia ones, I've used the Lobster ones, I've used the uh, Crescent ones, Baco ones, um, and a couple other brands. Uh, what I've found is the Baco ends up being the best just because its grip is just superior to any other wrench. Um, nothing grips like this wrench. Even the Crescent is pretty good. Um, I'd say it's almost comparable but this happens to be just a little bit better so I use this in conjunction with my uh, pliers wrench that I have in the back very handy here's a little cheapy screwdriver that I carry with me always uh, no matter what it's just always on hand uh, works as a great pry bar, works as a great poking tool, scraping tool it's just useful to have in any tool kit right here I have a PB Swiss uh, PB169.V01 this is like a pocket screwdriver so the bits will come out each bit has a flat head and a Phillips head on each side accordingly and it's attached to a magnet it's not a very strong magnet because it, well, it, it attaches to the bits directly so it's not going to have a good hold but it really does get the job done and it has some small flat head bits in there which is really what I need uh, to position different sensors just in case things happen and they go out of place. Uh, let's go to the other side. So on this side I have it's pretty pretty new player pliers for me. Uh, it's just the Lobster UWP 200 DNAs uh, made in Japan. Great pair of pliers. I actually got the 175 as well and I'm thinking about getting the 240 uh, so I've only had these for about two months, uh, but you can see, you know, it's, it's getting its use. The paint is chipping off, uh, paint is chipping off here, it's got some markings, some stains on it. Uh, very good pair of pliers, they're quickly becoming my favorite pair of pliers. You can slip the joint into any, you know, side you want, just like a regular pair of water pump pliers. The difference is the jaws are a little bit longer than you'll see on your Knipex Cobras. Uh, or your other water pump pliers so they can hold a lot of different stock sizes and you have screw removal options right here so you can grab uh, cylindrical objects uh, like this kind of from here Let me move it down and you'll have a strong grip in that way too uh, so this type of pliers gives you a lot of different options and uh, it's one of the most used things in my kit uh, it's pretty much my go-to pair of pliers I strongly recommend this I've only had it for two months uh, but I got a feeling it's gonna continue to last and even if it doesn't last I'm gonna get more because it has so much utility uh, for what I do also comes with a little screwdriver pry bar portion uh, I don't really use that too much um, maybe you will um, but more than likely I think most people will end up trying to wrap this up and cover it up so they don't stab themselves uh, with this so right below it I have a pair of Milwaukee 
uh, electrician style pliers. These are the Milwaukee 6 in ones. Before that, I had these uh, Nakos with me. And really, what I was just looking for was I needed a pair of needle nose pliers that was very thin, that still has some stripping capability. Uh, the Nakos are working really well. I'm just trying the Milwaukee's out. Um, overall, the Milwaukee's, they just feel like they're better assembled. I mean, that's how. It's got a good name for a reason, right? But, you know, you have your uh, strippers right here. You have a larger pair of cable cutters right here. And then you have your uh, little bolt cutters, mini, mini screw cutters here. And it's got a little latch thing that you have there. The one thing I would prefer to have on this is a pair of crimpers somewhere around here. I believe the Milwaukee 7-in-1s have crimpers too. And I think some Knipex pliers do as well. But I just wanted to go with this brand and... You know, check it out. Uh, plus, for the price you pay for this, you're going to get a really good quality pair of pliers compared to Knipex, which is, again, great pair of quality pliers, but it'll be around $50, $60 for a similar model of pliers. Alright, so I covered everything on the sides. I'll start with the main pouches. So the front pouch is something that I never had in my previous toolkits, but it's something I use a lot of. And I thought I could cover that with, uh, you know, different standard bits combined with a ratchet. But I'm finding that just using these wrenches tends to be a little bit more convenient. I just pull the set out and I, I use this. And it's great because a lot of these wrenches are thinner than the bit handle. Which means that if there's a screw or bolt recessed into a valve, let's say, I can reach it down with this. I can stick the ball end in, reach it, and then if I want to get some torque on it, um, I'll just take these pair of pliers and put it there like here, and twist, and uh, or I'm sorry, the other way, and I can break the seal on that screw and get it out. Uh, probably going to be my, one of my most used uh, things in the kit. Uh, you know, it's gear wrench. Uh, I don't know if gear wrench has the best name with Allen wrenches compared to Bondis, but I've never really bent a gear wrench uh, Allen key. I've never really broken one. They've been okay. I've heard stories of people breaking Bondis, even though Bondis is supposed to be the strongest one. Uh, but we'll find out over time which one's better. I used to have the Bondis one in this kit because it's you know stubby, it's small, and the stubby ones come in handy in some situations. But I don't like using stubbies for every single job that I do. It's not comfortable compared to these. So I switch these out. And I figure if I need the stubbies, I'll go and get them. Because those situations are pretty rare. Next up is my vessel driver. This is my basic pull out and you know drive a screw and then put back in tool. It's got a number two Phillips here and a number six flathead. Just basic bits that are handy. And having this is very handy because I don't have to go into my bit kit for that. I can just pull this out and put it back in the pouch when I'm done. Very convenient. Uh, I do like the vessel driving systems. Uh, that ball grip, I mean, it's so simple, but it's so convenient. It's really one of the most comfortable drivers you ever use. And you can always take that out and use this in conjunction with other drivers, other tools you know, which I do, which I'll explain in a, another video. Next up is, this is a Deadwood Craft Oiler Pen. Uh, this type of oil pen I think gets sold by a lot of different companies under their name. I don't know who the uh, OEM for it is, uh, but I do know that it's very useful. Uh, one person pointed out that oil does leak out this end. You can see maybe my finger. I got some oil on me now. Uh, there's really no way to stop that. But I'd rather have an oil oiler pen on me than not because it does come in handy in many situations. Uh, here I got a Milwaukee Inksol. I am probably looking to replace this with a Milwaukee pen that has a marker and stylus all in one. Marker, of course, I can use to mark down things or parts if I'm changing things out. And the stylus portion I can use, you know, for my phone uh, if I need to access that while I still have gloves on. So, 
This is a pretty new version, but new uh, tool edition, but I really do enjoy this. It's helped me out a lot. So this is from La Bear, it's a Taiwanese company. A very good driver overall that I have on me. So I can take that bit off here, put it here. Now I have a T driver that's ratcheting. Now I know I already have a driver like this, like the Vim driver, but it doesn't ratchet as a T driver. So I have a lot of choices. Sometimes you'll see me like on a job and I'm with my ratchets and I'll pull them both out and I'll use this and I'll ratchet with this and then I'll take this out and I'll switch the bit, bit out, put it in here and ratchet with this way. And basically what I'm doing is I'm filling out what's more comfortable for me because I'm just picky about that. So uh, it's convenient to have both of these on me in my pouch and uh, it's a little redundant but I can happen, I happen to fit have the uh, space to fit them in my pouch so it really works out well for me um, with this type of tool you can also take that back and put this little bit thing on and now I have a ratchet as well problem is the head is a little big so it's not that discreet but there's a lot of capabilities with this tool and it's been coming in handy and it's pretty thick and substantial so I don't think it's gonna get damaged easily um, compared to my Vim, although my Vim has been holding up very well uh, even though I put on some pretty hard jobs. So right here I have the Kinepex Twin Grips. So I did a video a little while ago just comparing these two. Um, this is the Lobster 8 inch, uh, is the TG 200 NA and the uh, Kinepex and you know I was using this for a while. Uh, just because it's a slip joint and it, it has a couple of different features that I like uh, But then some people commented in the videos and one person he talked about what he liked about the Knipex tune grips um, And one thing he pointed out was the thin neck on it I never really thought of that when I was switching and transitioning to this tool uh, So with that new information I said well that's pretty useful that thin neck So let me go back to this one went back to this one and uh, so far so good it's not a tool I use often. It's one of those tools that uh, you just pull out every once in a while. I still don't like that button system. I prefer the slip joint speed. However, if I want speed, I have this. This will work for me. And then this is what I pull out when it doesn't work. So for the most part, I can cover a lot of my plier needs with this. And then when I can't cover it, I use this. And uh, it does the job. It has a good reputation. Most people like it and they'll defend this type of plier to their death. I've seen a few people that aren't fans of it, uh, but those folks are kind of rare. So next up I have something similar to my cheapy screwdriver. This is a Mayhew pry bar. It's similar to that screwdriver, but it's just on an angle. And I've used Mayhew pry bars and Mayhew tools before. They really are built tough um, and they do last. Um, so this came with a little set. Oh, I think I have the other one here. I have the other set here. Other uh, piece of set, rather. So one's angled, one's not. Comes in handy. And uh, if you don't want to pry anything with it, you can also use it to scrape tools. Or scrape uh, gunk off the tools or whatever you need it to scrape, you know? So last thing I have in here is my Kinepex pliers wrench. This is with the Ergo Grip. So Ergo Grip is great for use. It's just bad for carrying in pouches because it's kind of thick and kind of fat. Uh, most people are aware of these pliers. Uh, they are very good. They can replace a crescent wrench or a Baco wrench in pretty much almost all situations. I really only carry around the wrench to you know help me go on the other side of a bolt and take out the nut but very useful very helpful to have uh, what I find is that it's not just useful as this if I don't have sockets on me which I don't have any in this kit I can also you know face a bolt like this and turn that way and do that and it works pretty well although over time I'm sure it'll get damaged you know that's the kind of thing I need it for right now so that's what I do all right guys, so there you have it. These are all the tools in my tough built 7-in-1 tool pouch. This is what the pouch looks like uh, when it's naked. It is a little bit thicker. Um, it does have a lot of space, but it still 
fairly compact compared to other pouches. Uh, my Mellow Tough pouch, which I've done a couple of videos on before, is definitely more compact. I definitely enjoy carrying the Mellow Tough pouch around a lot more than this. It's easier to carry around. It's so compact and tight. This, however, will give me exactly what I need. I, I get carry the Allen wrenches with me. That's so helpful. I have this set of pliers with me. That can be helpful uh, in some times of need. Um, the scissors, they work as good nippers right now. You know, having all these things available is super helpful to me, uh, which is why I prefer this pouch at this point in time. But who knows? Maybe I'll change up to something else. But I don't think I'm going to go any bigger than this. If I can go less compact while still carrying, you know, almost the amount of same amount of tools, maybe less, then I will take that. Um, and I will figure how to work that with my, my system. Anyways, let me know if you guys have any questions or if you have any thoughts or suggestions about uh, any any of the tools that I have or what you'd replace things with. Uh, be happy to answer them or happy to interact with you guys. Let me know.